Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing colors, the national anthem, and invocation. Military guests are covered throughout the duration of the ceremony. How pens? Attend! Hut! Bosun, post the side boys. Side boys, oh! Cowpens, arriving. <laughs> Deputy, surface forces, arriving. Vice Admiral, United States Navy, retired, arriving. Sponsor arriving. the colors. Hand salute.
Let us pray. God, you are the source and the limit of all, and into the middle you call us. We thank you for the victory and our liberties won, especially for the victory led by Brigadier General Morgan, which this ship's name commemorates. Thank you for the gifts of wisdom, courage, and faith that make even our limitations a gift. At each step of and even accompany those who walk. Thank you, especially for the care you gave to the men and women who served aboard USS Cowpens. Inspired by the memory of the battle in the field of South Carolina to the legacy of fighting World War II aboard CVL-25, through numerous acts of war and peace, for firing Tomahawk missiles in both Iraq wars, to numerous years of modernization and maintenance. In all, you have protected and formed the souls of our thundering herd. Today we remember, give thanks for, and complete the service made on board Cowpens. Bless those who gathered, who had the pleasure and the pain to call themselves a mighty moose sailor. Give us fond memories of the fun, the frustration, the hard work, the boredom, and the adventure. Give us the relief and pride of mission accomplishment. Give us a common bond, even as we move apart. Bless those who speak today with clarity and with wit. And bless us all who gather today, who even had a small part in the life of Cowpens, that we may exercise and enjoy the virtues necessary for victory and freedom. Amen. Thank you, Chapman Brown. Guests, please be seated. Hosen, host the side boys. Side boys, left, all right, back. Navy tradition dictates that each ship constructed for service be honored on four historic occasions. Healing, christening, commissioning, and decommissioning. <laughs> this ceremony, being the last, is designated to be a somber event. However, today we celebrate the 33 years of dedicated service that Cowpens has given this nation. A plank owner is an individual who was a member of the crew of the ship when that ship was originally placed into commissioned service. The origin of the term is the implication that a crew member was assigned when the ship was being built and commissioned, and therefore has rights to the ownership of one of the wooden planks that was used to construct the ship's main decks. Today, our crew becomes plank preservers as their hard work and inhospitable conditions will enable Cowpens to continue her service as a logistics support asset so that her parts and equipment may continue to support the fleet and breathe life into other ships. There is a special bond between a sailor and a ship. We depend upon each other. The ship depends on the crew to bring her to life, and the crew depends on the ship to protect them from the elements and to provide the platform from which we perform our sworn duties. Please take a moment to honor the proud service of our past and present crew members with a round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the commanding officer of USS Cowpens Commander Jack O. Allman. Good morning and welcome. Before I get into my remarks, I see a few open seats and a lot of folks standing, so if you'd like to come up now, it's a good time to do that. Good morning, Mrs. Mustin, Mrs. Miller, Vice Admiral Moore, Rear Admiral LeClaire, Admiral Steindl, Commodores, Captains, Commanders, Shipmates, and Family, Friends, welcome. What a beautiful day to celebrate Calpens and send our ship off right. 
Thank you to the band and the color guard. You've done a great job. How about a round of applause for the band and the color guard? Calpin, stand at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce the very first commanding officer of USS Calpins, Vice Admiral Edward Moore, Jr. But wait, there's more. He's the son of a World War II Chief Petty Officer and has roots in the Navy, deep roots. As an enlisted U.S. Naval, uh, excuse me, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy Reserves in 1963. In June of 1968, he earned his degree in psychology at the Southern Illinois University and was commissioned as an officer. Throughout his 17 years at sea, he served success successively as gunnery officer, communications officer, navigator, operations officer, and weapons officer on a fleet oiler, a destroyer escort, a guided missile cruiser. He served as executive officer of USS Buchanan, a guided missile destroyer. He commanded USS uh, Lewis B. Puller, a guided missile frigate, and of course, USS Calpins. Ashore, he served in the Bureau of Naval Personnel as Junior Officer Detailer and Shore Assignments Coordinator. He earned a master's degree in Business Administration from Naval Postgraduate School. He served as current Navy Operations Analyst on the staff of Commander U.S. Pacific Command in Hawaii, and later Assistant Chief of Staff for Manpower Personnel on the staff of the Commander of Pacific Fleet. His flag assignments include Commandant, Naval District, Washington, D.C., Commander of USS Carl Vinson Task Group and Commander of Cruiser Destroyer Group 3, Director of Strategy and Policy Division, Chief of Naval Operations Staff, Assistant Deputy Chief of Naval Operations Plans, Policy and Operations. During his tour on the Navy staff, he was also the Naval Operations Deputy Representative to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. His final assignment was Commander, Naval Surface Forces, U.S. Pacific Fleet, he retired from the Navy in July of 2001 after 38 years of service. Vice Admiral Moore continued to serve in the Navy in a different capacity following his retirement, becoming Engineering Services Vice President for Defense Contractors Atrion, excuse me, Antion Corporation and later General Dynamics Information Technology. He retired fully in 2012 and continued his legacy by giving back to the community. He volunteered at Four Seasons Hemet Veterans Support Group and the Riverside Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, assisting homeless veterans and mentoring youth development in Riverside and San Bernardino counties in California. He's been on the board of directors for the San Diego Fleet Week Foundation, San Diego Armed Forces YMCA, Navy Federal Credit Union Association, and the Inland Empire Diamond Foundation and the National Boy Scouts of America. He is a distinguished graduate of Southern Illinois University and has been inducted into the Arkansas Black Hall of Fame, the Buffalo Soldiers Museum Hall of Fame, and most recently, Naval Postgraduate School Hall of Fame. In 2023, he became the 80th recipient of the Laurel Wreath, the highest national award for achievement that can be bestowed on members of the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. He also serves as Senior Warden at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Hemet, California. Please join me in welcoming Vice Admiral Edward Moore. Good morning and thank you. Please, please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you for that. And thank you, Captain Allman, for your kind introduction. Well, it's a, it's a great day in terms of the weather and everything else, but it's uh, also a little sad. But before I get into the core of my remarks, I offer my heartfelt thanks and appreciation to cryptologic technician first class Maxie Barker 
who over the last four months coordinated the activities and the social schedule of the commissioning crew and guests. And gas turbine electrical first class John Byerly and the USS Calpins Veterans Association who hosted last night's banquet. Maxie and John, where are you? Hold your hands, please stand. Everything that you touched, everything you've done over the last four months to herd, get it? Herd us into the right path was accomplished in masterful fashion. I feel comfortable that I speak for everyone who participated by saying, well done, shipmates. You both deserve a mighty move and more. Ooh. See, it never goes away. <laughs> to my family, my wife Debbie, daughters Kimberly and Stacy, and son Tony, your total support for me and our 19 moves over 30 plus years of service has truly been the wind beneath my wings. Through all the hardships, good times, the frustrations and joys, I could always count on all of you to stand by me no matter what. Erica loved a party. And she would have, <coughs> she would have thoroughly enjoyed last night's banquet and all the pomp and circumstance and ceremony on a day like today. I sense her presence with us and I know you do as well. Mrs. Mustin, it has been particularly delightful to be with you and Kay this morning. Uh, after so many years since our ship's christening, launch and commissioning ceremonies. Truly, your spirit imbued 33 years ago when you broke that champagne bottle across the bow has carried this ship through thick and thin. You and your daughter Kay honor us all with your presence here today. We also owe a debt of gratitude to the people of, South, of Calpin, South Carolina, who over the years have annually welcomed the crews of our World War II namesake and this modern day ship to the Mighty Moo Festival held every year in June since 1976. I think I'm right by saying that the only exceptions were the COVID years. If San Diego is America's finest city, the town of Calpins is certainly its most patriotic and friendly. Mayor Jared Spencer, Councilwoman Danielle Good, and Councilwomen Danielle Good and Erin Woodford, Jan Humphreys, Town Clerk Teresa Carter, Superintendent Diana Bramble, the Dowis family, on behalf of all veterans from both ships, thank you. Thank you and every citizen of the town of Calpins for your hospitality and steadfast support over the past 47 years. The relationship between the ship's crew and the townspeople has been truly phenomenal. Lastly, I acknowledge and recognize the presence today of at least seven members of the Riverside Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. The work we do in our community, led by Mr. Lewis Winder, who's here today, U.S. Air Force retired, by the way, to guide and mentor middle and high school young men on their journey to manhood and responsible citizenship is hard, it's exacting in time and effort, but oh so rewarding in the results that we have been able to achieve since 2015. We have impacted hundreds of lives in a positive, results-oriented manner, and that is what community is supposed to do and be. Thank you for being here today to help me close a chapter on my former life as a Naval officer. It means a lot to me. Now, we all came down this pier this morning feeling a range of emotions. I suspect this is a very bittersweet day for most of us. On the one hand, this occasion presents a rare opportunity to refresh relationships, for reunion, and the nostalgia associated with people who have been through exciting and tough times together and come through with unparalleled success. The sea stories this weekend 
mostly true, <laughs> have been many and the laughter contagious. The camaraderie intense and sincere. On the other hand, many of us, and I'm certainly one of them, never thought we would live to see our beloved Aegis Cruiser retired and placed on the inactive and spare parts list. So it is with a great amount of joy mixed with sadness that we gather here to bid farewell to a ship that helped mold and shape many of us into the people we are today. Our shared experiences in the tranquility of peacetime, in the ancient moments of combat, in maintenance periods that seem too long and too full of vexing and ever-present frustrations, in extended periods at sea where monotony and boredom were punctuated by instances of sheer terror that required thick, quick thinking and prompt action to avoid disaster. In port visits to places that simultaneously were fun but reinforced appreciation for the quality of life in our own country. All these and more cemented the teams that we forged ourselves into, cemented the relationships which led to the triumphs we enjoyed. Individual success as well as collective crew success across most of the 33 years Calpins has been in service has been the hallmark of every crew doing what duty required. So at the end of this day, no matter when we were crew members, we can all agree that we served on the best ship, the most formidable warship, in the best Navy, in the best country in the world. I know in my heart that long after we leave this pier today, we will from time to time continue to reflect on our service to country, ship, and each other with a measure of pride and satisfaction that few other professions offer. There are more than 65 members of the commissioning crew and their families in the audience today. Between that crew and the current one, over the last 33 years, thousands of young Americans and Americans-to-be have served honorably and with valor on Calpins in countless places and on nearly every ocean of the world. Let me recount the ways. Routine training ashore at sea followed by six-month deployments to the Western Pacific. Indian Ocean and Arabian Gulf. 15 years in the FDNF, the Forward Deployed Naval Force in Japan, conducting successful operations time and again at an eye-watering operations tempo, nearly 70%. Eight years in a modernization program that tested every person involved, resiliency and patience. And every step of the way, there were the families and friends who loved, encouraged, and underscored the reasons these sacrifices were worth our time and effort. The bottom line is that the men and women who have crewed this ship and the families who supported them reflect the best that this nation has to offer. As I said to the crew during my remarks at the commissioning 33 years ago, we haven't always done everything right, but we've always given it our best shot. It remains my view that every crew from commissioning to present day possess the finest qualities of young America. Intelligence, curiosity, leadership, honesty, physical and mental strength, compassion, moral courage, dedication, and of course, patriotism. It is these individual qualities forged into a single will which gives life and personality to a ship. To the current officers and crew, as you are about to march off for the last time, it may seem as if all the hard work and effort, the collaboration and coordination to solve problems large and small, your collective and individual technical skill that you brought to work with you every day, it may seem that it has all been for naught. Eight years of labor in a dangerous environment to refresh and modernize our ship and instead of continued honorable service, within this hour, you will execute a high-level decision to inactivate her. As you depart, do not think your labors and diligence were in vain. To be sure, when you look back on your time in this ship, you can choose to view it as a glass half empty or half full. 
I recommend the half full approach. Why? Because in the future, equipment, parts, perhaps even complete systems will migrate from our ship to other Aegis platforms in the active force serving <coughs> that are serving worldwide. These items will repair, replace, or make operational equipment that will enable that ship, whichever cruiser or guided missile destroyer it might be, to perform its mission. And in doing so, a piece of you will be there. A piece of USS Calpins will live in that ship because you faithfully executed your responsibilities. Those officers and sailors in these other ships may never know you personally, but they will appreciate the thoroughness with which you did your job while you were here. And with that remembrance, with the recollection of that fact, you could take justifiable pride in your time as a member of the last crew. Thank you again, Captain Ullman, for the invitation, for the opportunity to provide a few brief remarks on this auspicious occasion. May God bless every person connected with this warship, past and present. Thank you, Vice Admiral Warren. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor to introduce Calpin ship sponsor, Mrs. Lucy Mustin. In a time-honored naval tradition, Mrs. Mustin christened this magnificent vessel, officially bestowing upon her the name Calpens and launching her into a distinguished career of service to our nation. The act of christening marks the beginning of a sponsor's enduring connection to a ship. A bond that lasts for the entirety of the vessel's service life. An Alexandria, Virginia native, Mrs. Mustin enjoys a storied connection to the United States Navy. As wife of the late Vice Admiral Henry Mustin and daughter-in-law, mother, and grandmother to naval officers, she's part of a family whose naval service spans more than a century. And her dedication to our maritime forces extends far beyond her role as ship sponsor to Calpens. She served as president of the Society of Sponsors from 1995 to 1997. And in 2003, she took the honored role of ship sponsor for a second time when she christened USS Mustin, the Arleigh Burke class destroyer, honoring her family's legacy of naval service. Mrs. Mustin's role as sponsor has been a constant presence, providing unique connection to the ship's history throughout Calpin's lifespan. Excuse me, lifespan. We are privileged to have Mrs. Mustin with us today, along with her matron of honor and daughter, Kay Miller, as we close the chapter on Calpin's history. Their presence connects the ship's proud beginning to this significant moment, highlighting the enduring spirit that, the, that has guided Calpin's throughout her years of service. Mrs. Mustin's unique role as sponsor of both Calpins and Mustin provides her a special place in the hearts of two ships, crews, and the history of the Navy. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Lucy Mustin. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and former and current crew members of USS Calpins. Also, my good friend, Admiral Ted LeClaire. Thank you, without you, Kay and I might not have been here. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here with you today as we commemorate the distinguished, I've got to put this up a little bit, uh, service and legacy of USS Calpins. As the ship's sponsor, I've had the great privilege of witnessing the dedication, courage, and resilience of all of those who have served aboard this wonderful ship over the past three and a half decades. I remember the day in 88 when I received a letter from John Lehman, who was the Secretary of the Navy, inviting me to be her sponsor. And of course, I quickly wrote back accepting. We launched this magnificent ship on March the 11th, 1989 in Bath, Maine. My daughter, Kay Miller, was my matron of honor, and she's here in the front row today. 
I smashed the champagne bottle across her bow as she slid down the ways into the Kennebec River. And I have the beautiful ceremonial bottle and a wonderful wooden box on my mantle in the den and I see it every day and think of the ship and her crew. From its commissioning in 1991, the ship has sailed through turbulent waters and calm seas alike, always upholding the highest standards of excellence and duty. As we bid farewell to the mighty move, remember the countless missions she's undertaken, the miles she's steamed on behalf of our national security, and the vital role she's played in protecting our nation's interests. And we honor the brave men and women who have served on her decks, each contributing in her storied history. Their hard work, sacrifice, and dedication ensures that Cowpens remained a formidable force in our fleet. We also reflect on the camaraderie and sense of family that have been forged aboard this ship. The bonds formed here have been strengthened by shared experiences, challenges, and triumphs. These relationships will endure long after Cowpens has been decommissioned, reminding us of the ship's lasting impact on all of our lives. Even as an East Coast resident, I've been fortunate enough to know a few of the COs. In fact, about three weeks ago, I ran into Vice Admiral Bill Sullivan and his wife Iris, who were up from Florida to the Washington area, and I had dinner with them. And Captain Tom Dicey, who is here today and is a Naval Academy classmate of my son's and great friend, is here today from the East Coast, and I see him frequently. In fact, last Friday, my son had a beautiful retirement ceremony in the Navy Yard, and Tom Dicey was there, so I saw him Friday and see him today. Uh, to all current and former crew members, I extend my deepest gratitude. Your service has been exemplary, and your legacy will continue to inspire future generations of sailors. The lessons learned and the memories made aboard Cowpens will forever be a part of our great naval heritage. As we close this chapter, I know we will carry forward the spirit of USS Calpins in our hearts. May we honor her legacy by continuing to uphold the value of honor, courage, and commitment in all that we do. And it has always been a high honor and a great privilege for me to be her sponsor. And I say with great pride, victory vindicates liberty. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mustin. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor and privilege to introduce the presiding officer of today's ceremony. Rear Admiral Ted LeClaire is a native of Scituate, Massachusetts, and a 1991 graduate of Villanova University, where he holds a Bachelor's of Arts degree and was commissioned through Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps. He holds a master's degree excuse me, master's degrees from Harvard Kennedy School and the U.S. Army War College and is a graduate with distinction of the Joint Forces Staff College. A surface warfare officer, he initially served as first lieutenant and repair division officer aboard USS Callahan DDG-994. He, he has operational experience in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans, as well as the Mediterranean Sea and Arabian Gulf including deployments in support of operations North, Northern and Southern Watch in Iraqi and Enduring Freedom. His five command tours include Inshore Boat Unit 2-2, Maritime Expeditionary Boat Division 4-2, Naval Reserve U.S. Forces Korea, CNO Warfare Systems N-9 Reserve Unit, and Naval Reserve U.S. 7th Fleet. In May of 2022, Rear Admiral Leclerc assumed the duties, I said Leclerc, I believe, it's Leclerc, excuse me, assumed the duties as Deputy Commander, Naval Surface Forces, U.S. Pacific Fleet, and Director of Task Force LCS. His previous flag assignments were as Deputy Commander, 
U.S. 7th Fleet and Deputy Director for Operations Mobilization Assistant, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. Additionally, he led the design line of effort transforming the reserve force for the Chief of Navy Reserve, aligning just under 90,000 personnel for maritime competition against peer adversaries. He is a former chair of the Navy Reserve Policy Board and a former member of the Secretary of the Navy's National Navy Reserve Force Policy Board. Please join me in welcoming Rear Admiral Ted LeClaire. I think they're doing some uh, sea whiz testing over there to make you feel at home. I thought it was a needle gun at first, so that would really make you feel at home. Uh, we wanted to do that. Hey, you know, I, I, I look out at this crowd, and I was telling Admiral Moore when I walked down the pier today and I visited the crew six months ago, um, there's just a feeling I've had when I've been around you today and also on the ship, and it's around the word service. And often I think when we associate the word service, we associate it with sacrifice. But today I think of it in a more positive way that we think of it as a gift. And that gift is the feeling that I know many of you, the Master Chiefs there shared with me and the men in black were they, uh, that this feeling you have about the joy and mostly the good thoughts you've had of your service in the Navy and on this ship. And what it made me think about is if we could bottle that and just get every young person in the country to sip it. I know every one of them would want to follow the journey that you've fallen because that is really a gift that we all have had serving in this uniform and on this waterfront. The other thing, Mrs. Mustin, when she noted that she wrote back to Secretary Lehman, she did not text him back or call him back. She actually probably wrote him a letter, handwritten, put a stamp on it and stuck it in the mail. So it just goes to show you how long uh, this ship has been here. So Mrs. Mustin, Vice Admiral Moore, I just, the, uh, the surprise that I'm sitting on this dais with the two of you, I can't tell you how honored and humbled I am. Captain Neilman, fellow flag officers, Admiral Steindill, Skipper Dicey, captains, commodores, shipmates, and most importantly, crew members, past and present, of USS Calpins, good morning. Jack, see in my church, usually the priest would say that again and say good morning and have everyone do it again. So good morning. There we go. Jack, thank you for the introduction, and uh, you know you're getting old when your remarks are shorter than your bio. And uh, there's only a few paragraphs to go. I spent considerable time thinking about what I'd say as we bid farewell not only to a ship, but an important era in our Navy's history. Laid down December 23, 1987 at Bath Ironworks. Launched on March 11, 1989, and commissioned March 9, 1991 just a couple months before I became an ensign. Three dates, I'm sure, sponsor Mrs. Mustin and Cowpins, first CEO, Vice Admiral Moore, remember well. Cowpins, its crew and their actions, every single day demonstrated resolve and readiness of our surface Navy around the world. From being the first ship to launch tomahawks during Operation Iraqi Freedom to providing disaster relief following the 2011 tsunami in Japan. Cowpins has time and time again boldly sailed under harm's way and always come away unscathed on the other side. It is unfortunate but a necessary reality that with the decommissioning of this ship we move ever closer to the final pages of the Tycho's proud chapter of naval service. Nonetheless we have far more to be grateful for and happy about that than being melancholic. Thanks to this ship and this class Every large surface combatant is built with power, prestige, and survivability ingrained in the keel. So as we mark the decommissioning of this warship today, today is more about thanking the crew members, past and present, their support networks, and most importantly, their families. The personal sacrifices ensured this ship's capabilities were always on display for the world to see, granting our surface Navy that competitive edge. From 1983 onward, these ships defended our nation's interests, supported critical combat operations, ensured the, and ensured the freedom of seas. More than anything, they brought Aegis in the vertical launch system, VLS, revolutionary technologies in their day into the hands of you, our warfighters. Calpins, the 17th Aegis ship built, pro proved the value of these advancements 
And as Aegis and VLS have evolved over the past 40 years in both the cruiser and the destroyer variants, Calpins continuously demonstrated their effectiveness and their lethality. Soon these technologies will evolve again into the integrated combat system, conventional prompt strike and the maritime strike tomahawk. But as someone who served on these piers during those days, as someone who was there when Aegis joined the fleet when I was on these piers, and I was a ve very je jealous divo aboard the USS Callahan, a kid-class destroyer, you simply cannot underestimate the incredible capacity it brought to the surface force. People overviews, overuse the phrase inflection point that these early cruisers changed everything. Not only that, but they also served as the proving ground for our major commanders, an elite opportunity for bold seasoned leaders hungry for a challenge. One of my many Forrest Gump-like experiences, and to add to the list is being on stage with these two, <laughs> I was a young ensign. I was sailing on board the USS Antietam. In fact, I was part of the preconditioning crew, commissioning crew of USS Shiloh. And I was said, Ensign, go to Long Beach and I want you to get the SORM, which was a document at the time that, remember, there was no internet, you know, there were, Al Gore hadn't invented it yet, and there was thumb drives and things. You couldn't even do that. So I was literally in radio. I met RMC earlier. Where is he? I was in radio, photocopying page after page to take back to Shiloh. And at the time, Antietam had one of the best reputations. But that day on Antietam, I was then with a guy named Captain Bob Natter, who would go on to be a four star. His hair was slicked back. He was in his wash khakis. He had this chiseled Vietnam River boat veteran look to him. And it was my first glimpse and experience of a cruiser CO. And that image has stuck with me to this very day. These cruisers gave our captains the privilege to serve as warfare commanders, directing frontline operations necessary for the defense of the strike group, offensive operations, and the larger joint air defense architecture. The responsibility is immense, and the authorities granted unrivaled in any other service in the world. Like these formidable cruisers built to counter a burgeoning Soviet threat, our surface Navy's training, tactics, ships, and equipment must evolve at a faster rate than the threats we face. Our Flight 3 destroyer, equipped with the Spy 6, Aegis Baseline 10, a range of improved standard missiles, and a comm suite ready to pair with the latest unmanned platforms, ensure our Navy's surface and air missions are more advanced, agile, and lethal against the most sophisticated threats. Make no mistake, the next few decades will look nothing like the last three when the cruiser stood the watch, but we will be ready. CG-63 is one of many gray examples, pun intended, many gray examples of what it means to deter aggression and maintain freedom of the seas. This ship's impact reaches far beyond August of 2024. You, the people who served on and in support of this ship, poured their hearts and souls into understanding it, maintaining it, operating it, and you simply owned it. Cal Penn sailors will always share a common bond with the remaining cruiser sailors. And I look forward, as they pass, the wisdom they learned on this proud ship to our newest Blue Jackets. So let's not have the retirement of Cal Penn's dampen our spirit our service Navy needs us all more than ever, and we must double down on the readiness and warfighting prowess of all our ships and crews. Cal Penn sailors, past and present, family members, supporting organizations, thank you for your hard work. Thank you for all of your commemorating this noteworthy milestone today. May the mighty Moo live on in the annals of Navy history. Victory vindicates liberty. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Claire. Guests, please rise for the award presentation from Admiral Leclerc to Calpens Commanding Officer, Commander Jack O. Ullman. Calpens, attention to award. Commander, Naval Service Force, U.S. Pacific Fleet, the President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Meritorious Service Medal, Gold Star and the Second Award to Commander Jack O. Ullman III, United States Navy, for service set forth in the following citation.
for outstanding meritorious service while serving as commanding officer USS Alpens, CB 630 from May 2023 to August 2024. Commander Allman excelled in energizing the ship's culture and refocused the crew on professional development and execution of the mission, culminating in a highly successful inactivation and harvest. He drastically improved connectedness and morale in the most challenging stage of the ship's life cycle. His stewardship of Cowpens during the ship's extended modernization period was exemplary. Under his leadership, Cowpens focused efforts on returning sailors to sea and increased the support to ships afloat to more than 22% of Cowpens' crew. He oversaw the qualification of one surface warfare officer and the qualification and requalification of 35 enlisted surface warfare specialists. The first warfare qualifications on Cowpens in over five years. Cowpens maintained the highest state of damage control readiness as evidenced by two successful Naval Sea Systems Command 8010 drills with scores that exceeded 98% and five successful no-notice assessments from surface force damage control staff. Under his direction, Cowpens Chief Petty Officer's Mess established an afloat enlisted leadership development program and graduated more than 100 sailors from both Cowpens crew and across the waterfront. Commander Allman's exceptional professionalism, personal initiative, and loyal devotion to duty reflected credit upon him and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, B.R. McLean, Sandwell, United States Navy, Commander Naval Service Force Pacific Fleet. Thank you. Please be seated. Calpen, stand at ease. Good morning again and welcome. As a South Carolina native, it's been the honor of a lifetime to be here today as the final commanding officer of USS Calpens. Named after the Battle of Calpin, South Carolina, one of the most significant battles of the Revolutionary War, where in 1781, the unexpected victory of American patriots turned the tide of the war. The fact that this battle took place in my home state has been a very special connection for me. Now that you've already had three speakers, I know it's warm and what could be said has been said and I'm torn between getting this over with and moving on and making it take as long as possible knowing this is the end for our mighty move. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here today and I will focus my remarks on gratitude and I thank you for being here to share in this special day. Mrs. Mustin, our ship sponsor, and Mrs. Miller, matron of honor, thank you for your con continued connection to Calpins and your life of support to the Navy. We're honored that you would share your time with us today. Vice Admiral Moore, I can't think of a better guest speaker to be here than you, our first commanding officer. Thank you. Admiral Leclerc, thank you for your support and interest in Calpins, your mentorship and guidance. I'm grateful for the time we shared uh, with Fabi at the Commander's Training Symposium Social and for coming on board to take some time to visit and take a tour. Within the first six weeks of assuming command, I had the great privilege of going to the annual Mighty Move Festival in Calpin, South Carolina. I've never experienced a stronger sense of community and connectedness than what I've experienced in Calpins. I met multiple people who moved to Calpens because of that connection, and it's truly something special. To the, uh, excuse me, to the town of Calpens, Mayor Spencer, your staff, Councilwoman Good, Councilwoman Wofford, Town Clerk, Teresa Carter, National Parks Service Superintendent Bramble, the town of Calpens, Calpens Veterans Association, Mighty Move Festival Committee, the Calpins Depot Museum, and Calpins National Battlefield, and many, many more. Thank you for your continued support 
and making the connection to Calpens so special. Getting us to, uh, here today on time has been a team effort and a team event and reflects the professionalism and dedication of our Navy team. Thank you to our sexual assault response coordinator, Jenna, our military family life counselor, Deborah, and our ombudsman, Shrijana. A special thanks to the CNSP staff, the JAG team, Commander Tyree, IC Mav support, Dave, our port engineer, Pete, Travis, the team at South Coast Welding, Steven, Eric, the barge team support, and again, the list goes on. I'm sorry if I missed you. Thank you for your support. The United States is a maritime nation, and the U.S. Navy, alongside our allies and partners, defends freedom and preserves economic prosperity and keeps the seas open and free. The U.S. Navy is the most highly skilled, technologically advanced military force in the world, and our Navy's surface force is the preeminent means available to our great nation to protect, it, protect its interests and sustain prosperity worldwide. It also is the largest part comprising nearly 73% of our Navy and nearly one third of our ships are at sea at any given time. During 33 years of outstanding service in defense of our nation, Calpens has been an integral part of our surface Navy, setting many records, including an impressive run of six consecutive battle efficiency awards. Other highlights include multiple deployments to various regions, including Western Pacific, the Arabian Gulf, numerous military exercises and operations, including wartime service in the Gulf War, Operation Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom, and many more. The first bit of action, fittingly on the Battle of Calpins Day, January 17, 1993, launching 10 Tomahawk land attack missiles on suspected Iraqi targets in the Central Command Area of Responsibility. In June of 1999, she executed a home port shift to Yokosuka, Japan. On March 20th, 2003, she fired 11 Tomahawks in the Arabian Gulf as part of the first strikes in support of our Operation Endur Enduring Freedom. Later that summer, she was the first U.S. Navy ship to visit the People's Republic of China South Fleet Headquarters. And in 2004, she supported disaster relief efforts in the aftermath of the Indian Ocean tsunami. In March 2006, she participated in a passing exercise, exercise with the Russian Navy ships. In March 2011, she provided humanitarian assistance in support of earthquake and tsunami relief operations in Japan with USS Ronald Reagan Carrier Strike Group. In February of 2013, she executed an exchange of command and crew with USS Antietam. In April of 2013, she shifted home port back to Naval Base San Diego. And in October 2013, she rescued two civilian mariners from a fire on a container vessel, just to name a few. Calpens has had a good run, but the Navy must and is investing in more modern warfare, war fighting capabilities that will enable us to maintain our competitive edge. This focus of the divestment of some older ships ultimately led to the decommissioning of Calpens. A guiding principle in the last chapter on board was to the honor the legacy of Calpens. To honor the grit, determination, and creativity of the Continental Army and militiamen on that cold battlefield to honor the service of those of the first Calpen CVL 25, and to honor the legacy of those who served before us during her 33 year career. When I assumed command, there was uncertainty about her future. Would we decommission or go back to sea? Things seemed to be in suspended animation. In my assumption of command remarks, I promised that we would not stand by idly waiting. We will use every moment between now and her glorious return to sea or her graceful decommissioning to focus on teamwork, professional development, and a culture of excellence to ensure we are ready to fight. We have done that. Calpens is a cohesive team. We have tapped into the connectedness that is unique to Calpens. To honor and contribute to the legacy of Calpens, we set out to execute a textbook decommissioning with the following criteria on-time execution, no outside help for things that we should be able to do on our own, 
and no weekend work due to our own planning or performance. Thanks to our phenomenal team, many I've mentioned already, we achieved this goal early. But the real thanks goes to the crew, thundering herd who exceeded expectations. At the 25% conference, we closed out 52% of our spaces, making the 50% conference unnecessary. At the 75% conference, we closed out 85%. This crew, this final crew, is dedicated, hardworking, disciplined, and professional. We should all be proud of what they've accomplished as a team. And as a team, we aggressively pursued professional development and a culture of excellence. Thanks to the teams at navigation seamanship and ship handling trainers and the combined integrated air and missile defense trainer, we regularly and confidently mixed up our pages. <laughs> Con confidently kept up to 25% of our 350 sailor crew, dedicated professionals and competent warriors at sea, supporting deployments and exercises around the world on more than 20 ships, Navy ships, two Coast Guard cutters, and individual augmentee duties in Sasebo, Djibouti, Iraq, and Norfolk, if that counts. <laughs> Where our sailors earned numerous advanced qualifications, including six surface warfare officer qualifications, 45 enlisted surface warfare specialist qualifications and requalifications, tactical watch officer, sorry, tactical action officer, engineering officer of the watch, officer of the deck, and the list goes on. These efforts also led to 10 meritorious advancements, 63 exam-based advancements, and 92 re-enlistments. On board, we earned waterfront high scores of 98.6 in consecutive major fire drills, a 92% on our anti-terrorism certification. We led the waterfront in enlisted leadership development course, getting 100% of our first class petty officers through, 98% of our second class petty officers, and 55% of third class and below, and junior. Completing the training on board, our instructors also taught every sa sailors from every ship in the immediate area. Calpins also served more than 800 meals at the local soup kitchen. All hands participated in pilot program for uh, cognitive behavior training to overcome cognitive distortions that unchecked can lead to destructive anxiety, depression, or suicide. And yes, I said suicide in the decommissioning speech. We must remove the stigma of talking about mental health and suicide. All officers and chiefs participated in training for developing and implementing an outward mindset to improve relationships, collaboration, and accountability. More than 200 sailors participated in virtual reality pilot programs for suicide prevention and sexual assault prevention. If there was a way for us to get involved and get better, we did. Leading, <clears throat> excuse me, leading the way and enabling these efforts were the chiefs. Thank you to the chief's mess, which was never manned more than 50% of what it should have been. Chiefs remain the backbone of the Navy. Thank you to the wardroom, many who stepped up into positions well above their pay grade and experience, division officers serving as department heads and doing better than many of the department head school trained officers with whom I've served. Thank you to the triad members. <clears throat> Command Senior Chief April Jackson and Executive Officer Commander Tim Berry. Command Senior Chief was billeted to Calpins as a departmental leading Chief Petty Officer for the Supply Department as a logistics specialist. She has transformed into a true command leader. She is ready to serve as Command Master Chief at any command. She leads throughout the command and truly serves our sailors. Thank you. I wish you the best on USS Tulsa. XO, Tim, we were division office, officers together on a minesweeper 12 years ago. It was great serving with you again. You really made my life as CO easy. I knew I could count on you for anything. I was lucky to have you as XO, and BMU1 is lucky to have you too.
As we close the final chapter on USS Calpens, her sailors are ready to take their professional expertise, lessons learned, hard work, and dedication to the next challenge. The success of Calpens is owed not only to its sailors, but to its family. None of us would be here without their support. Thank you to all the families who make military service possible. You serve as much as anyone else. Thank you for your sacrifice. Two weeks ago, my wife and I took a trip, uh, a weekend trip to Yosemite Park. And if you've never been, go. You go now, I won't be mad if you leave. <laughs> we were in awe. It is a jaw-dropping, mind-blowing experience. We took pictures the entire time. The pictures are great, but they fail to compare and capture the grandeur and magnitude, beauty, and essence of, of, of Yosemite. Similarly, in describing or expressing gratitude to my family and my wonderful wife, my words fall short. So I will simply say thank you. I love you. As a member of the Calpins family, I went on, I went to CO number two, Captain Bethay's funeral in Arlington earlier this month. It was an honor to be there. It was a moving experience and the reception was beautiful. We shared good food, great sea stories, and fond memories. I invite you to do the same here as we say farewell to our ship. At the conclusion of the ceremony, please join me down the pier for a taste of South Carolina, or what I hope will be a taste of South Carolina. Let's share sea stories and memories over some whole hog barbecue and have a pig picking together. Our ship is being towed away in a few days. I wanted each Calpin sailor, past and present, to take a piece of Calpins with you. The term deck plate is used widely in Navy life. Hit the deck plates running, deck plate leadership, are common phrases. We took some deck grates, which is a type of deck plate. We cut them into small pieces and added an engraving to them. Take one as a tangible memento, but know that Mighty Moo isn't just the ship behind me. It's all of you. It's all of us. And Mighty Moo will live on. It has been an honor to become the, uh, a member of the Calpins family and to serve as your commanding officer. Thank you. The commanding officer will now read the decommissioning order. Calpins, attention to decommissioning order. Decommissioning order for USS Calpins, CG-63, from Chief of Naval Operations, Washington, D.C. Per references A through D and OPNAV ship inactivation schedule, decommission USS Calpins, CG-63, and place into logistic support assets status. Executive officer, make preparations to decommission United States ship Calpins. Make preparations.
Strike down the commissioning pennant and lower the incident jack. Strike down the commissioning pennant and lower the incident jack. Aye, sir. It is the name given to the American flag that is flown on every commissioned warship. Customary international law provides three criteria for a vessel to be considered a warship. First, it must be commanded by a commissioned officer. Traditionally, the officer had to be in physical possession of his or her commissioning document. Later, this was superseded by the requirement that his or her name appear in the published register of such officers. This was signified by the flying of a commissioning pennant. Second, the ship the crew must be under military discipline. This specifically rules out merchant vessels commanded by reserve officers with a crew of civilian mariners, as they typically do not have the armament that they would need to defend themselves during attack and sea. Third, it must bear the distinguishing marks of its nationality. In the United States Navy, these distinguishing marks are the command at sea packet of an officer eligible to command at sea and an ensign. The commanding officer will now present an ensign to Mrs. Lucy H. Muslin. The commissioning pen is a distinguishing mark of a commission named ship. Flown from the masthead, its origin is believed to trace back to the Battle of Dover during the First Anglo-Dutch War in 1653. A British ordinance required all foreign fleet ships transiting the North Sea or English Channel to dip their flags in salute when passing. Refusing to do so, Dutch Admiral Martin Tromp instead hoisted a broom atop his mast, indicating his intentions to sweep the English from the sea. This gesture was answered in kind by the English general of the sea, Robert Blake, who hoisted a horse whip from the mast, promising to subdue the Dutch. As history would show, the English were victorious, and ever since, the narrow coach whip pennant has been adopted by all nations as a proud mark of the naval warship. The modern United States commissioning pennant is blue at the hoist with a union of seven stars, and has two horizontal stripes, one red and one white at the fly. Command Senior Chief April Jackson will now present the commissioning pennant to the commanding officer. Naval tradition dictates that the senior enlisted leader present the last commissioning pennant to fly over the ship to the commanding officer. On behalf of the officers and crew, Commander Jack O. Allman will now present an ensign flown on 9 March 2024, marking the 33rd anniversary of the ship's commissioning to Vice Admiral Edward Moore, retired. Admiral Clare, United States Ship Calpens is ready to decommission. I intend to secure the watch. Very well, Captain. Secure the watch. Executive officer, secure the watch. Secure the watch, aye, sir.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the departure of the crew. The crew has been disembarked. The final watch is secured. I relinquish command. United States ship Calpens is decommissioned. Very well. Bosun, post the side boys. Hear the benediction. On this occasion of the decommissioning of USS Cowpens, may God seal her service and the service of her commands and crew for the good purposes of heaven. And now, may God give you true freedom. May God give you freedom and victory when you contend for what is good and true. May God give you peace, especially at the end of things. May God give us joy today and every day. Amen. Guests, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Ship sponsor, departing.
Vice Admiral, United States Navy, retired, departing. Deputy, Surface Forces, departing. Commander, United States Navy, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the decommissioning ceremony for USS Cowpens. Thank you for joining us in honoring the 33 years of service of this fine Navy warship. <laughs>